Hello everybody, Andrea Trowski here with Dental Health Tutoring. It is so cloudy outside. I turn on the light and I feel like it's still kind of dark in here. So I am sorry about that. And, um, and we are still packing because we're moving in about a week. So please excuse the mess. Now, this is kind of part two of a previous mock exam session video that I've done. Um, I was doing one on radiography, I was doing one on um, dental materials, and now I'm going to be talking about anesthetic. Um, and they were all part of the same PowerPoint, so I guess this is technically part three. So if you haven't watched um, the radiography mock exam session, and there's also a, um, a dental materials mock exam session, um, watch those two because I talk about three or four questions, and I do explain them too, which is nice. So let me share my screen here, and let's get started with some fun questions, everybody. Um, okay, um, yeah, so you saw the answer from the last one, um, but let's work on this one now. And if you guys have questions, please let me know and feel free to comment too. So then that way I know who's watching, if these are helpful, if they're not helpful. Um, keep in mind though that if you would like more um, mock exam questions, it's a good idea to become a Dental L member because I go through questions every single day. We have um, a full hour session twice a month, so you learn so much. You literally get hundreds of mock exam questions, which may be too much for you, who knows, but you can take your time um, going through them. I do explain all of them. If you have questions, I am always here. So I'll leave that link on the bottom of the, um, the YouTube video, so feel free to check it out. You can become a member by being a part of the Board Exam Prep Academy or the Dental L Student Program. Okay guys, so let's talk about this one. So what is a long acting anesthetic? There are short ones and there are long ones. Is it A, lidocaine or B, prilocaine, C, articaine or D, pivocaine, if I'm saying that right. So remember, there are long acting and there are um, short acting anesthetics. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about here, then yes, it means that you need to go through your local anesthetic unit and learn all of that stuff. Um, if you're a member, that is helpful because I do have a full um, anesthetic module. So you just have to click on that. I believe I have two teaching videos on it and lots of PowerPoints to go through everything. So it's like kind of like a one-stop shop for studying. So it's a lot easier for you. Okay, guys, so what do you guys think the answer is here? Any ideas? So the answer is the last one, boo pivocaine, boo pivocaine. I don't know how to pronounce that one, but that's a long acting anesthetic because there are some that last a half an hour, some last two hours, some last eight hours, some last, you know, longer or shorter. So you do need to know the differences. And the only long acting one is this last one here that I can't pronounce. Okay, next one, guys. Oh, and this is just kind of showing you guys an image of Orakix. So does everybody know what Orakix is? Now, it depends on where you live. You might, you might not have this available to you. Um, I'm in Canada primarily, so that's why I base a lot of it on that. But this is your um, topical anesthetic that actually is a little deeper um, into the gum line. So you see how they actually call it a local anesthetic? Um, it's kind of hard to see, but it says actually local anesthetic for periodontal use. Now I'm surprised that they would call it a local because it's not, well I guess it is because it's it's more than a topical if that makes sense. It's not a needle though, but it's more than a topical. So it's something that you would insert just underneath the gum line and squeeze, but it's not a needle so it doesn't hurt or anything. So that's the Oracix and I love this. When a patient tells me that they might be sensitive to the cleaning, I get them to try this first before an actual like local anesthetic with a needle because if they don't need that, it's much better. And this is though a short acting anesthetic. So it does not last like eight hours. It lasts 45 minutes, that's it. So it's, it's a shorter acting one. To me, it's a topical, but they actually call it a local. Okay, what is the safest anesthetic if the client has allergies? So you will have patients that say to you, well, I've been told I'm allergic to an anesthetic, but I don't know which one it is. Well, that's not very helpful, right? But they could be allergic to simply topical, or they could be allergic to a certain type of local. Now, I am actually allergic to um, topical anesthetic, which is extremely rare, but I am very allergic to it, so I can't have topical anesthetic. But again, it's very, very rare. 
So if you get that question on a textbook, or I'm sorry, on an exam, it's rare to be allergic to topical. But anyways, we are talking about something different. What is the safest anesthetic if the client has allergies? So you have to know which type is the safest for those patients with allergies. It's the amide type. So if the patient has a sensitivity or is allergic, then you want them to have the amide type. So does that make sense? Um, because ester, there's a lot of allergies actually to the ester types of anesthetics. So if you're not sure, it just makes sense to give them the amide type because then you're pretty okay with that. And it's not as um, potent if that makes any sense. Okay, so what is malignant hyperthermia? And I have that in red because this is a very important one to know. For students, for dental professionals, you need to know what this term is. So A, is it a relative um, contraindication to amides? Is it B, when anesthetic is administered in longer doses, when anesthetic is administered too fast, or when cyanosis occurs? So you guys have to know what this is. It's rare, but not as rare as it could be, I think. Like the textbooks that I remember reading like 10 years ago, not a lot of people had have this. But the more I see patients, it seems to be like one in, I don't know, like 50 people say that they have this. And I thought that was interesting. So the answer is A, a relative contraindication to amides. So I put this in here because we talked about earlier, if the patient's allergic to a type of anesthetic, then the amide type is the best to give. But now we're talking about what is malignant hypothermia. So they shouldn't be given that. It's a very rare thing, but this is just something that you guys have to know. Let's go through one more question here. Where do you discard the needle? This may sound or seem very simple to you, and you may be laughing, but people get this wrong, okay? So is it A, B, C, or D? What do you guys think? I'm just gonna have some water here. Where do you discard the needle? Read all of the answers very, very carefully. Okay, let's talk about the answer here. So it's in a Sharps container. Now let me just say as well, depending on the textbook you read, it could be yellow or it could be a red Sharps container. I have seen both. So there's no best answer, but so on your exam, if you have red is the only right answer, then the answer is red. If they have yellow, then the answer is yellow. If they have red and yellow, then I'd have to say the best answer is yellow because that's in most textbooks. So does that make sense to everybody? You might have seen a red sharps container, you might have seen a yellow, but yellow is the best answer only because that's in most textbooks where they're starting to change it now, where red or yellow is the appropriate answer. So I don't wanna confuse you guys, I hope that helps though. Um, if you guys have any more questions about anesthetics or local anesthetics, let me know. I'm so happy to help and I'll see you guys in the next video.